Hi guys, sorry for my delay. I know it takes me forever to finish a video. So here's a tutorial on this makeup look and I started with my hair basic. Candace is gonna come by and do it. Um, so I always start with my eyebrows. Here's a new spoolie and eyebrow brush from Anastasia. She sent me this huge package with a bunch of new dip brows even though I'm using my old ratchet one. <laughs> I've been growing my brows out so they look extra crazy this time but I'm just going to fill them in enough so you can't really tell. And I start lining them up before I really add the color in, so that way I don't go in too heavy. I always suggest that you start with a really light hand when you do your brows. You don't want to get too wild right away, because that's how you end up with really strong marker brows. So I carved out my brows using Studio Sculpt Concealer from MAC in NC30. And it's much darker than my skin tone, but you'll see that I'm going to match my shade later, so it's okay. And I already applied eyeshadow base, but I don't like it, and it turns out I'm allergic to it, so I'm just not going to mention it. And right now, I'm blending in my favorite transition color, and this is the Anastasia Shadow in Orange Soda, or Cream Soda. It's my favorite. I love how it looks. And now I'm packing in the Crease Sienna with a MAC 217. And then I'm going to go back in with the fluffy brush and blend it back out. And I'm kind of dragging the color towards the center to create the illusion that my eyes are a little bit bigger. And I love using these orange tones because you could see that right away the green in my eyes kind of pops out a little bit more. And using another fluffy brush, I'm just blending out the color. This is a brush from Sony Kashuk. I love her brushes. I blend like crazy, so I just go back and forth nonstop until I'm happy with it. And then in the center, I'm using On the Rocks by ColourPop with a small shader brush. The pigment on these is so amazing, and they're only $5. And almost all of them are completely vegan, which is really cool for a makeup line. It looks so gorgeous once it's on. Now back in the crease, I'm just adding a little bit more sienna just to darken it up a little bit. And of course you blend it back out. Using Peach Smoothie, I'm just going back over the crease just to blend it back out a little bit more. And then I'm going to use another ColourPop color called Girly and put that right at the top of my brow bone. I usually don't like a color there, but I figure for something more dramatic it would look pretty. So with another small and more dense shader brush, I'm just adding it right in the top. A little bit won't hurt, it's just when you do too much, that's when it starts to look a little bit crazy. And this is the cocktail I used to correct all the darkness on my skin. I'm sure you can notice that I have a lot of purple tones under my eyes and around my nose and lip area. So I'm going to start with the Makeup Forever Primer. It's the moisturizing step one or something. And I add it to all the creases on my face first. And then I make a cocktail in the back of my hand using the color corrector from MAC. And this will make a really nice orange shade so that way you can correct all the purple colors that are on my face. This is something that's always happened to me. It's a little bit worse if I'm tired, which I was. But I've had this my whole life, so correcting this will make it better. If you just start with concealer, that's how it will start looking ashy. It's really important that if you have any darkness, that you have some type of corrector. I choose to mix it with a moisturizer because... As you can see, I have more mature skin, and using dry products on mature skin can make it look worse. So to, so to soften up my wrinkles, I just add some moisturizer with it. And it's a primer, so it will last longer. It does look wild at first, but I promise it doesn't stay like that. This is how I keep the glow on my face to also match the rest of my body because you could see that I self tanned so it's so much darker than my skin tone I don't like tanning my face whatsoever I don't even like tanning my body so I try to self tan and always wear SPF I wear tons of SPF on my face that's why it's so much lighter 
and it's okay to blend out the correctors. You can see that um, the purple under my eyes has already looked so much better. It looks orange, but now when I apply concealer over it, it's not going to look ashy whatsoever, and it won't look muddy. This is my foundation cocktail. I put it on a flat top kabuki brush. This one's from Crown. And I mix the same primer with the Pro Longwear foundation. Um, it's a little excessive to mix so much of that primer, but I found that the Pro Longwear foundation is actually kind of sticky. Like, it's so sticky, it makes my brushes hard, which is gross. So, that freaked me out a little bit. So, I figured if I added some of the moisturizer, it would soften it up and not cling so tightly to the skin because if you're even a little bit dehydrated you're going to be able to see that and I was right so this gave it the same pro long wear technology in it but it just made it a little bit softer so that way I have more of a dewy glow instead of it just sitting inside my wrinkles and you could see it already um it made my skin tone look so much lighter I'm watching the video and actually thinking it looks so much better already And using a beauty blender, because you can't see on camera, but it didn't look as smooth with just the flat top kabuki. I like when it looks really, really soft. So I always use a drenched beauty blender to smooth it out a little bit more. Now I'm concealing with my favorite concealer. This is Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in Medium. I think this is amazing, especially for $5. Now, concealer does not have to be the brightest just so you look more contoured and highlight. I use only one shade lighter than my foundation, and that's what concealing is. So now it's going to cover up my imp imperfections, and then I'll highlight after. This concealer is amazing. I cannot believe it's only $5. So using a drenched beauty blender, I couldn't get to my sink, so I always keep Evian water next to me. And I'm just going to spray it a little bit more. Oh my god. <laughs> my bun and my face look so crazy. So I'm just going to blend this out. Beauty blenders are such a good investment, but it's so important to clean them constantly because they're porous. Now make sure your foundation is always blending into your neck. Sometimes I forget. So here's my highlighting concealer. This is... A shade or two lighter than my regular skin tone and I only put a little bit in my tear trust because of my background my tear trusts are more dramatic so I put them right in the center and then I add a little bit of highlight everywhere else that I want it on my face I do love contour but I just don't love it that strong so I don't even own a contour palette I've been thinking about purchasing one I just haven't decided on which one I want yet so for now I just make my own contour rules and I always set my under eyes with mineralized skin skin finish and light scapade and this morphe brush and I like to tap it on a little bit because it's your under eyes and mine are already so wrinkly that I don't like to put too much pressure on them and if you know of any other makeup setting powder please tell me because I haven't found one that I truly love from under my eyes. So Candace came by and she already curled my hair and she clipped it back for me. That's why it looks a little bit wild. So now I'm going in and finishing my under eyes and of course with Costa Riche. It's my favorite eyeliner. Even if you have brown eyes, if you want to make the transition off of black eyeshadow because a lot of girls ask me like what eyeliner do you use so it doesn't drip I just don't use black whatsoever I think once it mixes with your concealer under your eyes it looks so muddy and you already look tired and it looks grayish or bluish and I don't like those tones so I definitely suggest Costa Riche just try it once if you love black eyeliner just try it one day I think you'll like it ten times better and of course let me know if you do and if you hate it then I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now I'm going to blend out the under eyes a little bit more because it just looks a little bit better when you blend out the eyeliner that you put in your waterline. And because the wrinkles under my eyes are so pronounced, 
that it looks better for me if I add a little extra shadow underneath. So if you have wrinkly lids like I do, I've always had wrinkly, wrinkly lids, adding more shadow underneath will actually make it look a little bit better, especially if they're warmer tones. If you use cool tones, it's kind of it's kind of a little bit daring, but if you use really warm tones, it'll look so much better. So now I'm using the Anastasia Cream Color in Ocean Blue, and I thought it'd be fun to just add a little bit of a, of um, what do they call that? Like an inverted wing or a chromogra chromographic liner, I forgot what they're calling that now. And it does dry up and it is really waterproof, so I plan to use these more. This was my first time trying it out because she sent it to me in her little care package. Here's my favorite bronzer from Tarte. It's actually a super cool toned bronzer. And I'm going to pack it on with that Morphe brush. I'll lift the detail below. And I just put it in the natural contours of my cheeks and I build the color in. Even though this bronzer is such a cool tone for a contour, that's even better. And then if I feel like I want to look more golden, I'll add a second bronzer in that has more of a warm tone. <laughs> My ears got red again. I honestly don't know why that happens. I love this bronzer so much. It took me forever to find a bronzer that I love, so I cannot tell you how much I love it. So I'm just finishing up all the other areas. I like to add bronzer on my decolletage as well. I think collarbones are so gorgeous on a woman. It's like they have petite shoulders and pronounced collarbones, especially when they're all bronzed. So here's my favorite highlighter. It's MAC Soft and Gentle. I love so many highlighters. I'm absolutely obsessed with them. I mix about three or four every time I do my makeup. I don't even care. If I'm going to wear any makeup, it's usually highlight. It's my favorite, favorite thing to wear ever. So using the Sigma brush that I'll list below so you know which, exactly which one it is, I pack it on at the high points of my cheeks. And there is no shame in my highlighter game. I will pack on so much and I don't care. I also put it right down the center of my nose. I don't always contour my nose. I didn't this time. I don't really have a problem with it. I know it's a little bit funny shaped, but I'm okay with it. So I usually leave it alone and I just strobe. Here's the second one I'm using, and this is Makeup Forever, the Sculpting Duo number two. And this has more gold shimmer in it, and I'm just going to put that right over it. I actually, I like this highlighter, but I don't like it by itself, so I always make sure that if I'm going to use it, it's the second one that I use. And for my third highlighter, I'm going to use the Artist Couture Mermaid Fantasy. And this reflects teal, and I love that. I love things that reflect blue, or like my hair reflects blue. I love shadows that reflect blue, glitters, and especially this highlight. I think for the summer it's much more fun, especially because it's called Mermaid Fantasy. And I'm also going to use a little shadow brush and add some of the same pigment. It's actually just a pigment. It, I wouldn't just call it a highlighter. I know they're calling it that, but the Diamond Glow powders are just pigments. And I'm gonna put it right on top of the liner that I did earlier. Pigments you can use anywhere. It doesn't have to just be where, they're, where they tell you to use it. And now since I pack on so much highlighter, I like to just blend in a little bit more bronzer with a longer bristle brush. That way it looks blended and it's not just lines across the face. 
and I'm going to use the blush in the Frenzy Duo from NARS. And I am on blush probation because sometimes I get buck wild and I add way too much. So you're going to see I'm really lightly putting a little bit on because I don't deserve to just put it on like a normal person because I have no self-control with blush. And now that I finished my face contouring, I'm going to use Anastasia Clear Brow Gel and try to get my brows to stay in one place, even though they're completely wild. They look so crazy. <laughs> I'm not really a great brow example. I know they look so crazy right now, but I'm going to fix them. I just wanted to grow them out a little. So here's my favorite liquid liner by Sephora, but I cannot do it on camera. So I'm using L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I don't like it for bottom lashes, but for top lashes, it's pretty okay. I'm not too picky about mascara. The only thing is, is I really hate the CoverGirl one. It broke so many of my lashes. So I just started using this because Carly Bybell likes it. And here's the True Glue Adhesive. I can't put my lashes on on camera either, sorry. I'll work on it. These are the Vegas Name Grand Glamour Lashes. They're so gorgeous, I fell in love with them. And of course, MAC Fix Plus Coconut. I fell in love with this too. I bought so many of them. I even gave one to Candace because I'm just in love with it. If you don't have it yet, please try to get it. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. So Candace clipped my hair back for me and I'm gonna take it out soon. But first I'm just gonna put Makeup Forever Lip Liner 3C. This one's really popular. I don't love it, so I actually end up putting my favorite liner right on top of it, which is NYX Lip Liner in Rose Brown. I like more of like a brown taupe undertone. And I add a little chapstick just to moisturize it because I'm actually not going to wear any lipstick. I'm just going to wear the liners. Here's the rose brown. And just to give my lips a bigger shape, I'm going to line the outside a tiny bit. And then I also put a line down the center because then in photos it'll make your lips look a little bit bigger. I don't suggest to do that if you're like going to work or you're just going out, just do it if you're going to take photos like I do. So I'm going to take the clips out now and fluff out my hair. The curls are kind of sticking together so that's why it doesn't look as good and I'm taking that highlighter out of my hair. I wear so much that it gets on top of my hair also and makes it look like I have dandruff but I don't. It's just highlighter. So after you curl your hair so tightly if you want it to look fluffy if you like it the way it is and leave it but I like my hair to look, be huge and sharish and fluffy I could swear there was another clip back there <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull all the curls apart and fluff it out like crazy until it's as big as I like it <laughs> there totally was another clip wasn't there She clipped it all different ways so that way the curls wouldn't get messed up while I'm trying to do my makeup. I had a shirt on, it was just strapless. <laughs> oh my god, there was. I filmed this a few days ago and I'm recording it later, so I forgot that I look so crazy. So Candace did my hair for me. She used the Bellamy wand and the pearl one, the one that has like balls on it and it looks super weird, but I'm telling you, it gives you the best curls ever. And she uses the Vidal Sassoon hairspray and we swear by it, it's the most amazing hairspray in the world. She's so good at doing hair. I love how my hair looks every time she curls it like this. I'm probably going to do this every weekend over the summer. I'm obsessed with it.
So I hope you like this look and I hope you found it helpful. If there's anything else that you want me to do, please let me know. And I love you guys. I'll see you soon.